Let's welcome back in JJ and Harp for a segment we are calling Stay or Go. And I would like to think this segment is the Clash inspired, but who knows? Uh, anyway, we would be kidding ourselves if we said that this is not a pivotal offseason for both the Mets and the Yankees. So let's get right into it. We will start with the Mets and the polarizing Daniel Vogelback. Harp, should he stay or should he go? Uh, he's got to go, Michelle. I, I look, I know by the end of the year, his numbers don't look horrible. Uh, but he went through a massive slump. He was the he was the focus of outrage on social media. He just became kind of a symbol for everything that was going wrong with the Mets. And he, the problem is he just doesn't bring any value other than what he can do offensively. You know, the, the running, there's no defense, the base run, anything like that. So I think you got to find a better option at DH than Daniel Vogelback. You know, it's amazing. You see his numbers. Yeah, they're they're a lot better than I yeah. thought they were, the the quite year. frankly. Yeah. They're a lot better than I thought they were. And it goes to but tell you. was meaningless baseball. Like, Bingo. Like, a lot of August, September yeah. home runs when the Mets were out of it. I think they need to upgrade that DH spot. We talked about this a couple of days ago on Baseball Night New York. I am so intrigued by the idea of buying low on somebody like Reese Hoskins, bringing him in. He hits for immense power. That's the thing with Bo will go back. You want to think that he's a big time power hitter. You look up, he's got 15 home runs. He's got 16 home runs. Give me a bona fide power hitter in that DH spot. I'm moving What's up. wrong with Otani, JJ? Ah, well, that'd be nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was going to say, like, I was curious realistically who they could go out and get, but there's one thing that I will say, and all of my years covering baseball, I have never, and I mean never, been around someone who talks about baseball hitting pitch selection as much as Daniel Vogelback does. So, you want to back? You want back? There you go. Realistically, if there's someone better to replace him, we'll see if the Mets replace him. But if not, I don't think he's a bad option. Reese Hoskins. All right. Well, the Mets bullpen will certainly look a little different next season. Uh, JJ, will Drew Smith continue to be in it? So I'm going to say yes, believe it or not. And I know a lot of the numbers and a lot of the performance is going to point to moving in a different direction. But here's what I'm looking at, Harp. I want to have as many arms in the bullpen as humanly possible. And maybe you have a new staff that comes in and figures this guy out. You know, he does have good stuff. We've seen it. Look at Paul Seawall right now for the Arizona Diamondbacks <laughs> closing out games in the NLCS. Like, I'm not saying that Drew Smith is going to be closing out games in big time playoff moments, but I do think you're in a position where you want to have as many arms as humanly possible. I bring him back for another year. It's funny you mentioned that name, JJ. I was trying to convince our producers that maybe the guy like Drew Smith turns into a Paul Seawall. You never know. He, you know, you know, in some ways, he was the Daniel Vogelback of the bullpen because he gave up so many big hits on slider, hanging sliders and key games, and he's just been a frustrating guy. But you're right. I looked up at it. Hitters hit, uh, the opponents hit 171 off his fastball. He's, he's got the good fastball. He's got to figure it out. You, you don't need to have him a high leverage guy. My, so my knee jerk was reaction, you know, he's got to go. But I would bring him back for the same reasons you said. You never know when you got a live arm. And they don't have many live arms in that bullpen. You got to take advantage of him. Yeah. Try and figure it out. He, I definitely think he's back. I'm sure. I mean, that was the healthiest he had finally been uh, in a, an entire season. Most innings, most games that he's pitched in his career. Obviously, the walks are what hurt him. But you can't play both sides. You kind of no, no. I say bring him back, sides. but I don't know. It's, it's You're not in front on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's switch gear to the Yankees. Their second baseman, Glaber. Torres, Harp, should he stay or should he go? Uh, I'm going to say go. I, look, I know the numbers in the end of the, at the, by the end were good. It's the best number he's had in a while. And he looks like maybe he's starting to figure it out again. But to me, JJ, he's a guy who makes so many bonehead plays. I just want to, to me, he's not a winning player. Even if he does put up numbers, he makes n big, big mistakes in key situations, it seems like. And he just gets, he, get, he loses focus, whatever. I want to make a change there. I'll move over to second. Peraza at short. And uh, I'll even bring back Urshela. Maybe he make make him a uh, kind of a for, uh, utility guy. But I think I think you got to try and get something for Torres while his numbers are good. You can trade some. Okay, I totally understand the baseball IQ point. And Glaber Torres has never lived up to what I think Yankee fans thought he was going to be. That said, Hawk, they're dying know, for know, offense. He's one of their best offensive players. I mean, if you take Aaron Judge out of the equation, Glaber Torres was the best everyday Yankee in 2023 from a position player standpoint. They need that offense. He still hits for power. He still one of the better offensive second baseman in the sport. And if you let go of Glaber Torres, I don't think your offense is good. How many days did he make you pull your hair out? Oh, way here. too many. <laughs> or make me go gray, all of the above. What wouldn't? Okay, one more Yankee, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, JJ. Stay or go. So I'm going to say go. And he did all the right things. And he was a pro's pro. And I liked where he played all over the place. Harvey just doesn't hit enough. That's what it boils down to. I'm looking to upgrade this offense. 
I want guys coming off the bench who are going to give me more from an offensive standpoint. I appreciate the fact that ICAF was a pro. He did the best he could last year. He played all over the place. We know he's not an outfielder. Didn't embarrass himself, but I'm saying sign Yeah, he got a lot of compliments just because he figured out a way to be useful after he couldn't play shortstop for him or whatever. But you're right. When, at the end of the year, you look at the numbers, and they're, they're underwhelming. So they got to find a way to get offense. I know you can say keep Torres, that would help. But I, I got to move on from IKF. You got to get better offense somewhere. Else. He only played in 113 games last year, by the way. 